Take me to the frontier of particle physics today. There's tremendous progress being made. It's such an exciting time in fundamental physics. Not only particle physics, but we said gravitational astronomy, the exploration of the force of gravity, black holes, quantum information, quantum computing, and all sorts of, all that stuff is, is to me utterly fascinating. I, I think for the first time, it's probably true to say in particle physics, we don't know if there's anything else just around the corner, which is bad, uh, you know, but it's also, it is our duty to find things out. And today, we are featuring my exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with my friend and colleague from across the pond, Brian Cox. Brian, welcome. Oh, it's great to be back. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's, it's been, been too long. To yeah, be and we don't usually get to do it in person. It's usually over Zoom or something. Right, let's get some of your biography out there for stateside people who might not fully know who you are. Uh, you cut your teeth as a particle physicist, is that correct? Yeah, initially, I mean, actually, my degree is at the University of Manchester, by the way, in the UK. I've never left. So I started there doing my undergraduate degree, postgraduate. What do they call you there now? You are professor of particle physics at the University of Manchester. Yeah. And Royal Society, as in the Royal Society of London? Yeah. Royal Society professor of public engagement in science. Yeah. So we're kindred souls across the Atlantic. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so you never left. Is that because they wanted you so badly or that no one else wanted you? I, yeah, <laughs> probably the latter. But, but I started, it was actually um, uh, physics with astrophysics, my degree. So I did a degree in physics with astrophysics. Then PhD in particle physics, although the first year was I was working on supernova neutrinos. So I was crossing over astroparticle physics, as we would call it. Then I got into particle physics, went to the DAISY laboratory in Hamburg and worked on electron-proton collisions, so-called diffractive scattering. I've seen DAISY... Online, I've seen daisy simulations of things. They simulate like colliding black holes and things. Fascinating. Daisy, D D D D E S Y, the Deutsche -E Electron Synchrotron. Yeah, but they they have a a public facing platform. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, because the, the accelerator is no longer operational. Oh, there. Okay. so they, but it's a big, it's it's a huge lab in Hamburg. Mm -hmm. So I did my PhD there. Uh, that's in particle physics. Then moved to Fermilab in Chicago y yes. for a while and then to CERN when we were building the Large Hadron Collider. And then, but I've always- CERN, Switzerland, yeah, yes. in uh -huh. Geneva. And remind me, that's center, the European Center for Nuclear uh, Research. Research, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Acronym, French acronym. Yeah, to say. It, because it was founded in the 1950s. And at the time, so it was, uh, it was what part of the reconstruction of Europe really after the war. So it was a, that lab was founded, I think it was 